100 gang car. It's a little um, gas powered thing. Uh, it has a broken axle right now, but it's fun to ride. It's stick shift. You know, stick shift is a five speed, I think. Uh, you always have to fake face that way. And just turn your head to go backwards. Yeah. That's the M100. In front of it is car 107. That's from Scranton. That's the Scranton sweeper. It used to be blue. And it actually still is in one part of the car. That is the color it used to be. And this is the color we want to restore it as. The agreement was if the track gets done by a certain time, we get to paint it blue. And we're going to paint it blue. Right. Awesome. <laughs> we have enough orange things around here. This car also had its brus bristles redone. These are brand new to us. Um, but back in the day when trolley companies used sweepers, which trolley companies on the streets had used sweepers versus a plow, which we'll get to down the line, but the sweepers could only go in the streets because they were they didn't affect the pavement. The snow the snow plow would disintegrate the asphalt as it rode over top because the plow sits on top of the rails and the rails are in the pavement. So they use sweepers on the uh, streets, the city streets, and you would see a lot of these around. But men, mostly men that worked back in the day for these companies, they would be sitting on a trolley, trolley horse, threading each one of those. Each one of these goes in and comes back out. So it's, two, it's one thread going in and out. They would spend all day doing this. This took hours. So he had about eight volunteers re-thread this side in about two weeks. And that's all they did, because these things, now this was made of bamboo, very strong. However, they break because they use them every day during the snow. Um, and they're going to be redoing the other side as well. They just have to... So the wires in caught. Why are some of the lower rooms caught? Oh, it's just caught in there. Okay. Just, just caught, yeah. Okay. He turned it on for me, and it operates, it goes up and down via this chain or via air. You can manually turn it up and down, or you can push a button and it goes up and down. But it has to be on top. This is the literary line. This is where everyone wants to see. They only built two of them. Independence Hall and Valley Forge were the names of it. We have the Independence Hall. IRM has the Valley Forge. That is for the South Shore Line. North Shore Line. Ah, it operated on North Shore Line. South Shore Line operated old um, Arrow Park. And the Comic Park. I wish they still do the bad Comic Park. Um, it's operated in North Shore. Like I said, they only built two. So it went. It went uh, from out of Chicago, and it operated up to 80 some miles per hour. It started with trolley poles. It has two trolley poles and eight motors. Uh, the two trolley poles have to be used. All eight meters right now don't work. We use six motors out of eight. It's the only car that can operate on the line at the time because it, say, it takes so much power. Uh, now from there, it went to the Chicago L. Imagine seeing this thing going around the curve in the center of Chicago. I would be afraid of riding and thinking it would fall off. It's a waste time. Um, from there, it went to SEPTA, Red, Red Arrow, P&W, and that's where it ended its life. It's, it was put onto the 69th Street to uh, Narstown High Speed Line, which a few of our cars, the Bullock Car and Farm 1, and 162 down here, they all operate at the same time on the same track, which is why it has the rest, this is the rest of the third rail shoe um, 
contraption. Uh, not much else is attached to it, but it still has a trolley pulse. And we operate with a trolley pulse. It still has a yellow leather interior in the dining area that you're more than welcome to look at. It's quite comfy. We don't, they used to cook the electro burgers on it. We don't have the kitchen capability now, but there's stuff still in there. It's four, it's a four car articulated train. The teal and orange, and it looks really good, but it doesn't run right now. We take that it out once. Well, <laughs> they do the outside first, so it looks pretty, so you have something to look at. This, has, this is prettier girl. down at the very back. Not a little girl, it needs to work. <laughs> this thing goes out twice a year. If you come in October, October 9th, it'll run. Oh, really? Hmm? Nice. For our fall festival. These are not the normal steps up there, but they're fine for us. But the operator's cab is quite small. Um, these are the original seats, the original decor inside, the paint, the lights. We haven't changed anything. We just removed some seats. You see a bathroom right here. It's all wires. This is where somebody would have been serving you alcohol with drinks and cooking you a burger. We cleaned it up a bit, but um, you know, we put the burger here, the refrigeration here, cleaning sinks in here, and then that's what the color of the the leather seats are quite comfortable and to sit these in. These are this is the original leather. All seats. original, yeah. They are in mint condition. They're beautiful, right? Yeah. Well, because when the when this car transitioned, when this train transitioned off of the North Shore, they had no u need to use the cafe car to serve any food because they were just traveling short distances. The L didn't serve any food. The 69th Street, they didn't serve any food. Um, so this is just more of a lounge. Cool. They may have given out water bottles, but they weren't cooking up food. It's the other train we rode a few years back to Seattle in the next year. Cool. Nice. Is it all Amtrak? It's all Amtrak. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We've got to learn about that. Yeah. 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 Cardinal from DC to Chicago. Looks like the car next to it, 2743. It's called a PCC, a President's Conference Committee car. They came up with this, this idea when everybody came back from war, they didn't know that that many men would be coming back from war. They underestimated how much transit affected the, global, the economy. So they needed to come up with a standardized type of equipment that they could mass produce. Back then, buses were big. Um, they were taking, replacing trolleys. So they came up with this design. It's a single-ended car, one person operated, and it has foot pedals, much like you drive a bus. It has a gas, go, and a stop brake, and then a dead man, which is like on some of our cars, you have to hold it down in order, order to move. Because it was a single-person car, if he let go of that, he had a heart, you know, something happened to him, then the car would stop. So they were able to mass produce these so that it drove like a bus with the type of controls. It didn't have a steering wheel, but if bus drivers needed to operate this, or if trolley operators that operated these needed to operate a bus, they could interchange. So they mass produced these. Every city had one of these. And you, this came from Newark, New Jersey. Originally, originally operated in Minneapolis, um, St. Paul. It was yellow. And uh, it came to New Jersey, and it ended its life in Newark, New Jersey in 2001, and it came here. Now, this has a backup controller in the back. It doesn't have any bells and whistles, unlike that car, 2743 doesn't have a backup controller yet, so the operator always has to sit on the front and have a guide in the back. This one you can come back here and guide, but you need somebody in the front to haunt the horn. Now it's a little wider than the other car, it just depends on the specifications, but pretty much they all look the same. Just the color here. This one has um, windows are cut from the other car, and this door leaves this car to the door and operate a house And there's also a heat box in the front. It's a very easy car to operate because it has foot pedal. It's original interior as to what Newark is. That's what yep. Just go like ahead, a bus. Go. Yeah. <laughs> Just like a bus. 
you get in the front and then you exit out the, the center. Oh. So the passenger oh, yeah. passenger flow would be a lot greater. They use these in all the big cities. Philadelphia, San Francisco, Boston, um, uh, Johnstown used them. No, 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 no. Please don't touch those. Get out, get out, get out. I am so sorry. Took the break off. My bad. I am so sorry. I won't touch it again. My bad. Yeah. Please don't touch me. All right, I'm sorry. I'll be back. Well, now we have Yeah. Damn, this is a little too All right, this is the R10, the plow. This is the You see the difference between a snow sweeper and a plow. This is a large piece of equipment. Uh, the plow would be lowered via air or by another controller um, onto the rails but not on the city streets. So you would see this. This car operated solely on the Norristown High Speed Line where that car ended up. It was uh, PST 10, Cloud 10, and it had third rail shoes right here. Um, you were not a passenger if you rode in this because everything inside was electrified. So only the operator or maintenance workers oper operated it and they wore uh, rubber gloves. Because if you came in contact with anything, you'd be a fly that got swatted. You'd be dead. It wouldn't be pretty. And those are to climb up onto the plow and fix it. And this was recently been I saw a These two cars uh, we don't talk about much because they're in the perfect condition. Uh, this is Valley 12, this ran west of Harrisburg, and the car down there is car 710. Which is from Harrisburg. This is going to be the next project that we in. Um, it's going to take years to do. What's with this car? I'm not going to talk about it here. Right. 162 operated on the Norristown High Speed Line. Like a repetitive thing you say. Ours town high speed line, so it's all high level platform, as was the bullet car, as was the delivery liner, which is why it's very hard to climb up into it. Um, it operated as a P and W when it first arrived, and it operated a SEPTA. They all they did was add a label to it. They didn't change the color, it's still its original color. Um, this is they had many cars of this type, and they were really good. They ran really well, uh, they ran really fast, they had a third rail shoe. Um, the only thing that has to be done with this car is the pole put on and the ceiling put back together. Um, but it hasn't operated in many years because that's a project within itself. Um, I would it. love to. This is 1019. This operates. This is an LRV. This is a car from San Diego uh, celebrating 40 years. You can go in this car. Just don't go in the operator's cab. Too many buttons in there that you can... Uh, and the car is not on, but yeah, you. <laughs> yes, me. You can look at the cat. You can look at it, but don't press any buttons, please. Yeah, this car is all electronic. It's not like any other trolleys. You have to physically put, plug in a battery, put a pole up, and it goes. Um, it's also articulated, much like the new LRVs are articulated, and it's the same in front as it is in the back. Because the cars outlived their normal life, they kept it. This car operated from 82 until 2013, so they keep them about 30 years or so. And they did a rehab on them, but um, they, they uh, sold all their cars, and there's actually still more of these for sale. They kept one, car 1001. They refurbished it back to its original 1981 look, which really isn't much different than here. They just didn't, didn't say San Diego MTS, it said San Diego Trolley. Um, and they operate that on the Silver Line, which goes around the downtown loop, along with the two PCCs, 529 and 530. Uh, people, this has air conditioning that you actually have to turn on. The windows don't open. Uh, it has a wheelchair lift. This is the only car we use that has a wheelchair lift on it. Um, so it's handicapped accessible. And it has the step that comes out from the bottom. You have to press the button to, in order for the doors to open when the car is on. That's, uh, that's the articulated part. So when it goes around corners, it bends right there. If you're standing there, you'll see the car uh, bend on either side. So the, the, that's the little, uh, like, little dolly thing in the center that turns.
Just don't go and touch things before you ask. Yeah, I'm, I'm once. I got it. I mean, this one, if you touch the but buttons, nothing will happen, but we've had people touch them when the car is on, and we highly discourage people from touching, especially this car, because this car, if you touch something inside, um, any of these buttons, you can set off all sorts of alarms. Oh, wow. Yeah, we don't, we, are, we like to keep our cars in operating condition. This we don't intend to break anything on purpose. <laughs> this looks like a more modern. It is, 1982. Yeah. It's our most modern car that we operate. Even though it's 40 years old. It has a pantograph, but we don't operate with a pantograph because our wire cannot, uh, uh, it's not a pantograph wire. What is a pantograph? It's what you said that uh, looks like a sideways V that goes between the car and the wire. If you go look okay. on any light rail vehicles, you see yeah. okay. the power, the it's power is just a through. single arm? Yep, just okay. a single arm, yeah. Or if you know the northeast corridor and the locomotives that run on there. No. You know, oh, 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 yeah. I the the northeast okay. corridor, like right. the trains that run there, they have okay. pantographs. Hanger. All right, because it's, it's But standard. that they change from mine to end. This car only has a single pantograph. Okay. Interesting. It, oh, it came with its own from Philadelphia. Actually, three cars. D39 as a work car. It was a line car. you got to come this way to see it. D39 was the line car. So what you would do is, in the center, there was a set of steps that would go up to the roof. The roof hatch would open, and then you would go on a rubberized platform that you were able to work on the line when it was active. And that's what that was used for. Now, 61 looks like it's in decrepit shape, but it's just cobwebbed because we used that for our terror trolley back when we did Halloween-themed events. Oh. They're not real cobwebs, they're all fake. But the condition itself is very worn. Um, Looks cool. It has never had any love. It's a center door car, which means you enter from the center and exit from the center. These doors are only for the operators. They could exit out on it. It used to have a step that went all the way down, but that has fallen apart. Um, if you go to Pennsylvania Charlie Museum, you can ride one of those cars. If you go to Electric City in Scranton, you can ride one of those cars in immaculate condition. This car is also from Philadelphia. This is another PCC. Foot pedals and everything, just different color. This is uh, this ran on the Route 23 between um, Chestnut Hill and South Philadelphia. It spent its entire life in Philadelphia. Uh, built in 47. This one's built in 46. This now this one looks so new because it was redone by the Friends of Philadelphia Trolleys, who was a nonprofit organization. They stay out of Philadelphia and they go to different trolley museums around the country that have Philadelphia cars and they raise money for them and they restore them. So they restored this car. They have very, and some of them are SEPTA operators as today. Um, they they raise money and they refurbish the seats. They repaint everything inside. They do anything to the car to make it mechanically sound. And that's what they did to this car. And that's why this is the 1950s colors that it shows. These cars do operate. They're not a fan favorite, mainly because you can't turn the seats around. Um, but people, if you're from Philadelphia, you love to see this car.